Playing music with other people is one of the more enjoyable parts of playing the flute. Yeah, one of the most intimate and personal ways to connect with people is to play with other flute players or other musicians in general. And so in this chapter, we're kind of going over the easy way to be able to play with other flutes and other instruments. The easiest way to play flutes with other flute players is to play flutes in the same key. Now they don't have to be the same octave. You can have a mid-range A playing with a pocket flute A, or say like a mid-range G playing with a contrabass G, or any combination thereof, but they always want to be in the same key. That makes it really easy in the beginning. Now if you've never played music with other people before, a great technique to start with is the call and response technique. And it's exactly what it sounds like. One person does a call, the other person responds. So the first person will play a little melody, and when they're ready to pass on the melody this, to the other person, you just go to a note and you hold that note and you use eye contact and a little nod, and the other person knows it's their turn, and they go ahead and they take, take over the melody. And so they play their little, little ditty, and then they'll do the same thing using eye contact and a little, little head nod, and you pass, that, you pass it on back. And it's, you just go back and forth this way. A good improvisational technique when two people are playing together in the same key is to play a rhythm and lead combination. One of you plays the rhythm, the other one plays the lead. When you're playing rhythm, it's really a combination of very simple notes that are played nice and slow, and they're also played in the same time every time. So here, this would be an, a, an example of that. And you can tap your foot to keep time. So it's a combination of notes that are really simple. Then playing the lead, you have a lot more options. You're playing the melody, so you have a lot more notes available to you, such as this. Then at some point, you may want to switch. So when the lead wants to switch, you go ahead and mimic the rhythm notes. That gives a signal to the person playing rhythm that you want to switch, and you just make that happen. It's a really wonderful way of creating songs and learning new melodies.
Another way to play two flutes together that aren't in the same key is to play two flutes that are a fifth apart. Now one thing to note is that when you're playing two flutes that are a fifth apart is you'll want to mimic fingering. You'll want to play fingering note for note on fingerings. Now they, you can be a, one person can be a little up front and the other person can be a little behind and that will still work. But in general, you want to play fingering for fingering. And another way to, know, to do it is if you both have memorized the same song. When playing with other people, playing drum and flute together is like one of the perfect combinations. Well, and it makes sense because the flute is a, a melodic instrument, it has a beautiful voice, and the rhythm is really developed by the drum. It's earthy, it's very rhythmic, so it's a great accompaniment. In this case, we're playing a hoop drum, but it could be any kind of drum. You could play congas, you could play bongos, even like a djembe. You could play a box for that matter, a cardboard box. As long as you kind of create a rhythm, that really puts it all together. And the rhythm is, they don't have to be very complicated, they could be very simple. decide to actually you know kind of get some movement in your rhythm and really kind of speed it up it's going to be important for the drummer to keep time tap the foot keep the time that way you really get a, a, a really good sense and combination with the flute and it really allows the flute to come along with you and the flute's going to want to tap their foot as well the flute player especially if you haven't played with other instruments before and that's because it really gives you that sense of time like you're talking about and and here's an example of that one two three Three. When playing with other instruments and other musicians, you do have to communicate the key that you're playing in because the flute really is, designate, is dedicated to specific keys where other instruments can play quite a few different keys. So they really do have to adapt to you. Now, when you start to play and you communicate to the, for instance, guitar player, you let them know, hey, I'm playing in this case, it'll be an A, uh, A minor pentatonic. So let them play in that. And as they're playing, tell them to go ahead and play and you're just gonna listen for a little bit. As they're playing, start tapping your foot so you get a sense of the rhythm. Listen to the notes, the sense of the time. And slowly but surely, as they're playing, start to play the, uh, the notes on the pentatonic scale. Start from the bottom and go up and see what combination really works. Now, it may take a few times to really, for them to adapt to you, for you to adapt to them, to get a combination of notes together that really works. But in a very short period of time, you'll get it down. You'll get a sense of that. And it's really fun. Now, we talked about, uh, you know, getting in a rut, that chapter. This will really help you 
as well in terms of getting past that because you now have to really open your ear. We're so used to playing our own little ditty when we're solo playing, our own little riff, when it's beautiful, but when we play with others, we have to adapt. We have to really listen and, and create different notes and note patterns. So it's really beneficial. The two easiest scales that I really like to play are the, uh, the minor pentatonic scale and the major pentatonic scale. And without getting into too much music theory, the, the minor scales tend to be kind of contemplative, sort of downbeat, where the major scales are real lively and upbeat. So if you're looking for a morning song, play a major pentatonic scale. Most of your, I should say, almost all of your Native American flutes are based on a minor pentatonic scale. In this case, we engraved that particular scale note right on the back of it. And what you're doing is you're playing straight up and down all five holes, and that's the minor pentatonic scale. When you want to play the major pentatonic, it's actually the relative major pentatonic scale, you never close the bottom hole. It's really that simple. But you're still playing a five note pentatonic scale. So in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five. So that's the high C in this case. Go back down, one, two, three, four, five. Now that fingering chart you'll find in the booklet. You can always refer to it just so it makes it easy for you. Now we do know that the minor key is engraved on the back of the flute. So how do we know what the ma relative major key is? It becomes relatively important, or at least it's adv advantageous, because when you go to play with others, now you have the option to say, oh, can you play in A minor or anything in C major? You have a lot more options available to you. you can, to find that out, you can go into the instruction booklet, and on this page, you will find the key of your flute. And so, in, for instance, this is in the key of A. The next note is C. And that would be the note with, uh, would be the bottom hole open. So that is the relative major note key. A minor, C major. If you happen to have an F sharp flute, F sharp minor, the next hole open is A, that is your relative major. In the key of G, you have a G minor flute, the next hole you open is A sharp, or also known as B flat, so now you're playing in, if you never close the bottom hole, you're playing in A sharp or B flat major. It's as simple as that. We're going to kind of give an example of what it's like to play with other instruments. And Zach's going to help us. Zach's been working with us for many years making flutes. But we're lucky, not just he's a great flute player, but he's also a terrific string player. And Zach, this is a really cool looking instrument. What is that all about? Actually, it's a ukulele and it's made out of a gourd. I grow these at my house. I mean, I saw this gourd and I just, I cut it in half and I said, man, this gotta be, it's gotta be a ukulele or a guitar or something. And, like and it's got the, it. got the body for it and you got the other half for another one. Exactly. I'm next in line for one of those. <laughs> right on. Hey, let's hear what it sounds like. That's really cool. So, you know, I'd like to play the flute with it. Now, we're going to play it in uh, the flute in A minor, which is just going straight up and down the five notes, and play anything you'd like, just to follow the time that uh, the person that's playing the instrument, you follow their time. Go ahead, let's try it, A minor. Nice. Now we can also play in, because you can play C major in that, yeah. right? Well, you, you can play almost any key in that thing. But we're sort of restricted to the key of the flute. So in this case, we're going to play C major. And C major is, the major is a little more upbeat. So if you never close the bottom hole of any of your flutes, you're playing the relative major, playing in, C, in major. So in this case, it's C major. And you have to still generate C major pentatonic is five notes. So here it is. That's four. We need one more note. Here's the high C. Let's 
Let's give that a try. Okay. Nice. I like that. It's a great sound. Zach is joining us with his guitar this time, and I'm going to be playing in the key of E. So, quite a while ago, Zach told me that the key of E is great to play with along with the guitar. Yeah, I mean, the key of E or A minor are two really good keys to play with a the guitar. They just work so well. Yeah, and you know, that reminded me while you were saying that, because we are playing with other instruments, we ha they have to adapt to us. So it really is important to kind of see what, what ideally the other person wants, to, what key that they're really comfortable with. In this case, the key is E and A. The other aspect to this is that the flute player sort of has to make sure they're playing at the same time. So allow the other, the guitar, for instance, play, let them play a few chords just to get a sense of the time and see, you know, how, what, what time it's, uh, that he's playing in. So when you come in, it has a nice harmony to it. So here we're playing in the key of E minor. And you have five major notes that you can play any part of. It's pentatonic. One, two, three, four, five. Back down. One, two, three, four, five. Let's give that a shot. Let's play something really nice, nice and slow. Now, playing in the key of the, ma the major key, in this case is uh, the key of G, G major, again, you never close that bottom hole when you're playing the major key. So you're still playing pentatonic, which is five notes that you're working, and any one of those five will work. In this case, it'll be one, two, three, four, five. This is the high note, the high G. And back down again, one, two, three, four, and five. Let's try that, Zach. Okay. Thanks. So to summarize, when playing with others, know what key you're playing in, start to adapt to them, go back and forth, and use those two easy scales that gives you a lot of options.